welcome to a new video this time after we checked on the head which we did in the first video of this budget rebuild on the 4AG 20 valve we are checking on the block first of all we are pulling everything out of the engine so the rods the pistons the oil pump everything that has relevance to this rebuild because while we have the head off i pretty much decided well i'm just going to rebuild the whole engine and as you can see that made sense because some items had quite bad wear and were on the edge of uh, maybe not failure but uh, having some issues that might not have been the best especially if we are going turbo in the future so enjoy and uh, you are going to learn a lot on how to check your bottom end for anywhere and to see what you need to replace and what you don't you can already see in this uh, frame that we have a lot of oil in this engine or rather on the bottom of the engine uh, that's because the front main seal was leaking quite badly and also the uh, oil pan was leaking very bad so uh, it makes sense to put some new gaskets in there or put a new seal in there also so that we do not leak oil everywhere and especially not on the exhaust as you can see also the complete underside of the car is covered in oil so i guess it won't rust right after we're getting the exhaust off we're just going to drain the oil and then remove the oil pan which isn't really that exciting of a task so i'm just going to fast forward this and after that we remove the oil pickup along with the splash guard for the crankshaft and that's where it gets interesting taking that splash guard off was quite a challenge and then you have full access to everything in the rotating assembly such as crankshaft connecting rods and pistons and then i'm just going to pull each rod out after the other next i'm removing the oil pump or rather i already removed it and i'm trying to open it i have had some problems with that you can see i actually broke a bit and rounded off two bolts so i used a manual impact and the last few bolts i had to actually drill out which was a huge pain so i would suggest because those bolts are very very tight and they are most of the times phillips bolts so they strip very easily because they are also very soft just use a manual impact driver it's gonna save you a lot of time because <laughs> as you can see i'm taking a huge amount of time just drilling that stuff out but why finally we got that stuff out and it's important to see on the oil pump gears and on the backing plate rather the backing plate is the most important you don't want to see anywhere on that or rather not anywhere that you can feel because if you if there's anywhere that you can feel so any grooves that will reduce oil pressure drastically as the surface needs to be extremely flat to uh, for the oil pump gears to build up pressure and if you have any scarring on that any scoring as you can see here um, that's already a reason to replace the oil pump an oil pump for that engine which is a 4ag 20 valve isn't that expensive it's only like 80 euros so it's completely fine and you, you don't really need a massive uh, budget to replace it but in this case because i can feel that rich that you can see here i am going to replace the oil pump i'm also going to show you how to prime the oil pump before you put it in the engine again because that's also an important step uh, so that you don't have uh, oil starvation issues at the beginning looking at the pistons that's also an important step uh, we are just pulling off the rings here uh, actually one piston or one set of rings was stuck on the pist piston they should be all moving freely if for example a piston ring was stuck especially if it was an oil control ring that can lead to oil burning issues because it cannot um, scrape off all of the excess oil on the cylinder walls and therefore that is one cause that might be leading to oil consumption 
Something else is if you look on the sides where the rings sit in, there are small holes. Those are also for oil to pass through. If they are clogged, which happens on a lot of engines if the oil change interval isn't held properly, so very rare oil changes, then those get clogged and lead to oil consumption also. The bearings in this case look not too great. They have some wear and on some the uh, material or the first layer is actually peeling. So it was a good thing that we took apart the engine and we are changing the bearings as well. Measuring the pistons is also important to measure the piston to wall clearance. You are going to take a micrometer from, in this case I'm using a 75 to 100 micrometer and measure the pistons. You are going to have to measure on the bottom of the pistons because the top of the piston is going to be smaller because there is more heat and due to the more heat the top of the piston is going to expand more than the bottom so they are kind of cone shaped so that when they heat up on the top the piston gets cylindrical shaped or close to cylindrical and that's why you measure on the bottom and that should have the full measurement of the piston so in my case it should have 81.00 so i measured those pistons at about 81 millimeters exactly so there is no massive wear on the pistons so if you for example had 0.05 millimeters of wear then your your piston to wall clearance is also going to be excessive which means I don't really need to replace the pistons. The issue is though, I my piston one is damaged and the issue is that these pistons aren't only available for the black top and these are a bit different than the silver top pistons. So I'm going to replace the pistons, going to run black top pistons, which do offer a bit of a high compression ratio, but I am modifying my head. So that doesn't really matter. So I, will be running about the same compression ratio as I did before. The piston to wall clearance is supposed to be about 0.04 to 0.06 millimeters on stock pistons. Yes, Toyota recommends or does seem to give okay, give like a spec to even larger piston to wall clearance but I don't like to run that large of a piston to wall clearance because it can lead to accelerated wear on the pistons. So it, because of this I am measuring this and locking the micrometer to that measurement and then I'm taking a bore dial gauge and basically putting in that micrometer in a vise only lightly so that I don't bend anything and copy that measurement to my dial gauge indicator so that I have uh, a zero point on that basically when I am putting that into the bore and I know exactly where how my piston to wall clearance is looking. So I am setting that in between that and setting the basically the smallest point to zero on the dial. After that, going into the bore and measuring that, and depending how far or where I am from that zero, I can see exactly what the piston to wall clearance is. In that case, it is looking to be around 0 0.05 millimeters. So that is completely within spec. That's it for the block analysis. I hope you've learned something. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.